So, all living organisms can be classified into groups based on certain criteria. It's important to do this in biology so that you can learn more about an organism from the others in its group, but also it helps when you are uh, discovering new organisms and trying to work out things about them, and also when you are communicating with other scientists to be able to be talking about the same types of organisms and using a, a common language uh, when you're describing them. So, one of the simplest forms of classification is to split living organisms into five different kingdoms. The kingdoms are animals, plants, fungi, protoctis, and bacteria. And in this presentation, we're going to go through each of these five kingdoms and look at the common characteristics that they have, which allow an organism to be classified into that particular kingdom. We're also going to look at viruses, even though they are not technically living things and therefore we do not classify them into kingdoms, we are also going to talk a little bit about, little bit about viruses. So, plants, animals, fungi and protoctis are all what we call eukaryotic organisms. What that means is that their cells have a nucleus. Bacteria are a very distinct separate group uh, out of these five kingdoms because their cells are different, they are fundamentally different. They are what we call prokaryotic organisms because their cells do not have a nucleus. So let's start off with plants. Now plants are multicellular. Their cells contain chloroplasts, and therefore they can carry out photosynthesis, making their own food, what we call autotrophic. They also have cell walls, which are made of cellulose, and they store their sugar as starch or sucrose. Now you can further classify plants into smaller and smaller subgroups, but one of the biggest uh, determining factors about what group a plant fits into is whether it flowers or not. So you've got non-flowering plants and flowering plants. Flowering plants, again, there's all different types of flowering plants, but you've got things like cereals, such as maize, or you might get things like herbaceous legumes, like pea plants. Okay, animals. Now, out of animals are also multicellular. They get their nutrition from feeding on other organisms, which we call heterotrophic. Um, they are capable of movement from one place to another. Now, all living organisms are capable of movement of some degree. It's one of the characteristics of living things but animals are, complex, are capable of more complex movement, usually from one location to another location. They have nervous coordination, they don't have a cell wall or chloroplast and, and do not photosynthesize, and they store their carbohydrate as glycogen. Again, you can further divide animals, and you might divide them into invertebrates and vertebrates, where they have backbones or not, and an example of an invertebrate might be a, mos a mosquito type of insect, an example of a vertebrate might be um, a human, like a, a mammal. Fungi. Now, fungi can be multicellular or unicellular. Um, the cell wall is made of something called chitin, and it's made of a network of fibres uh, called a mycelium of hyphae, and they have many nuclei. They are multinucleated. Now, they feed in a quite strange way. They feed by something called saprophytic nutrition using extracellular enzymes. Basically, they secrete enzymes onto their food, the food breaks down externally from them, from their cells, and then they absorb by diffusion the resulting uh, smaller nutrients um, that are now available after the digestion. And they store their carbohydrate in the same form as animals do, which is glycogen. So as I said, you can get single-celled fungi or you can get multicellular fungi. Single-celled fungi, and a common example of that is yeast, uh, which is used for baking and, and brewing. A multicellular fungus is something like mucor, which is the kind of stuff that you get growing on your mouldy bread or mouldy fruit. Protoctis. Now, protoctis are a strange collection of organisms. They don't really fit into any other groups. They're what's often referred to as the dustbin kingdom, because basically if it's not clearly a plant or clearly an animal, or uh, clearly a fungi, then it might probably end up in protoctis. So some of the organisms here have animal-like um, characteristics, some have more plant-like characteristics. They're nearly all single-celled. They're usually very, very basic organisms. Um, an animal-like example would be something like an amoeba, and a plant-like protoctus would be something like chlorella. So the last kingdom is bacteria. And like I said, bacteria are fundamentally different from the other four kingdoms we've already looked at. Um, they are all single-celled organisms, and these cells are a lot smaller than the other cells we've been talking about. They do have a cell wall bacteria, but it's made of something completely different to a fungus cell wall or a plant cell wall. This stuff is, is called peptidoglycan. Um, some of them have something called a capsule or a slime layer, which can help protect them in their environment. They don't have a nucleus at all, 
and uh, they, some of them have flagella, these kind of little tails that allow them to swim around. And they also contain things called plasmids. Plasmids are these little singular loops of DNA which, are, um, which the bacteria have separate from their main DNA. Their main DNA is just one circular chromosome. And some bacteria can actually photosynthesize. Here's a, a diagram of a typical bacterial cell. You can see the plasmid and the flagella uh, chromosome there in the middle and the, the membrane, the cell wall, and the capsule on the outside. They still have cytoplasm. Uh, like normal cells as well. Some examples, now bacteria are classified further according to the shape of them. Uh, here are some rod-shaped ones, Lactobacillus bulgaricus. Now these are actually the ones that you use to make um, yogurt from milk. You add it to milk to turn milk into yogurt. Uh, and the, ones, uh, the other ones are spherical shaped and they're called pneumococcus and these are actually the ones that uh, cause the disease pneumonia. So um, another thing to talk about in this topic is pathogens. What is a pathogen? Because some of these organisms can be pathogens. Now a pathogen is any organism that ends up causing a disease. It could be a fungus, like athlete's foot. It could be a bacteria, like cholera. It could be a protoctus, like plasmodium, which is the, the organism that causes malaria. Or it could be a virus, such as influenza. Now pathogens, because of their nature of being living organisms, living organisms can be passed on from person to person, or organism to organism, so they are the things that usually cause infectious disease, as we call it. Now this leads on to talk more about viruses. Now as I said, viruses are not classified as living things because they're not made of cells, and they do not carry out the characteristics of living things that we've talked about in the other video. They're actually much smaller than even bacterial cells. These are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. Um, they are all parasites. What that means is that they live and reproduce inside a host and cause the host harm. They can't reproduce without a host to do it with. They are made of uh, genetic material, either DNA or RNA, surrounded by a protein coat. So no membrane, no cytoplasm, no cell wall. These are not cells, remember, they're not living things. And all natural viruses cause disease and they can infect every type of living organism. It's not just humans that get infected by viruses, plants get infected by viruses, bacteria get infected by viruses. Here's some examples, the tobacco mosaic virus. Now this actually infects plants and prevents the formation of chloroplasts, which leaves these sort of little patches all over the plant, which is why it gets the name tobacco mosaic virus. The HIV virus, which is the one that infects uh, humans and destroys the, the immune system, ends up ca causing AIDS and influenza, which you will have all heard about, obviously, which is the flu virus. Now, here's a quick uh, 10 true-false questions to check your knowledge on this topic. If you just pause the video now and write down true or false for each one, and then you can press play and test your knowledge after.